Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Trusting in God's forgiveness, let us confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. Amen. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not, for I do, not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now I do what I do not want. I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. 
for I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched woman that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. And now let us read responsively Psalm 145 excerpt. I'll start. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, <clears throat> and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been, and no one except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, 
all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Please be seated. I know where I was when it happened. Do you know where you were when it happened? I was in San Diego years before I was ordained. I was actually in bed, it was the morning. My husband was slumbering next to me. I had my cup of tea at the side and I was reading my Bible because back then I was a Sunday school teacher. Back in the days when you had 120 kids in Sunday school, remember that? So <clears throat> I was preparing the lesson and suddenly it leapt out. This verse from Romans, from Paul, the things that I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do do. I woke my husband up, I said, I found myself in the Bible. And he goes, what? I read it to him. I was like, oh, to realize there's something called the human condition. So some scholars say about this writing in Paul that he actually wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about creation. He was talking about the whole of us from Adam. He was talking about society. But you know what? I don't care whether he was talking about himself, Adam, the whole of society. He was talking about me. It happens all the time. It happens every single day. I am somewhere. I was at the gym the other day, and I said something. Load of us, my age, women, this male trainer, late 30s, early 40s, and I said something that was derogatory to young men. It didn't dawn on me till the next day. I was like, what did you say, Michelle? How offensive that was. It happens all the time. So what is the human condition? My understanding about the human condition is we kind of this blend, this mixture of absolutely amazing good things and absolutely terrible bad things. Think about history. Think about all the things that humanity has created, all the art, all the music, all the things like what science has done, all the things that we can solve problems, we can heal people from terrible sicknesses. Think about that. But then think about all the evil we have done over the ages. Think about all the wars, the devastation. Think about what we're doing to the planet. Wars don't just kill people in wars. Wars kill people afterwards. Do you know, you probably do, that on average, 20 veterans die by suicide every single day? They've finished fighting. They've come home. They're supposed to be in a space where it's safe and they can enjoy life again. 20. I was watching a movie this week <clears throat> about Mustang horses that are used. They're called Mustang Saviors. They are used to help veterans who are on the edge, to help them not go down that path. And one of the survivors was saying, he said, if I went to my senator and my counselor and I said, 
20 people die every day, that's 140 a week. He said, that's a small plane, like a small plane crashing. We would be doing something about it. Evil exists in the world, and it perpetrates and goes on and on. Paul says, sin dwells in me. Paul says, sin dwells in him. Sin dwells in me. What is sin? Is sin just a moral default, something like morally I've done something wrong? Or is it something else? I like to believe that sin is anything that destroys my relationship. My relationship between me and God, me and others, me and creation, and me and myself. Think about that definition of sin. Think about if you can figure out times in your life when one of those relationships has been broken, has been severed. And that is sin. He has an amazing welcoming prayer practice. Thomas Keating, who died a couple of years ago, the Cistercian monk who used to be up in Snowmass here in Colorado. In the welcoming practice, he talks about we have these energy centers. We want power and control. We want survival and security. And we want affection and esteem. We're human. We all want them. But the thing is that when they are the driving factors and not our relationship with God, when they are the primary driving factors, what happens is we break those relationships, i.e., we sin. Our gospel says early on, Jesus says, you guys, not just you, them, you guys, you cannot listen, you cannot hear what is being asked of you. And he uses the example of children singing. He said, they sing happy songs and you won't dance. They sing sad songs and you won't cry. You cannot, you're not in tune with what's going on. Woe is you. Woe is them. Woe is me. But you know, we do have hope. Thomas Merton, who is probably one of the foremost uh, mystical theologians in the 20th century has this statement, and I think it's so powerful. He says, at the center of our being is a point of nothingness, which is untouched by sin and by illusion, a point of pure truth, a point or a spark which belongs entirely to God. This little point of nothing in us, as our poverty, is the pure glory of God in us. He calls it the point vierge. Think about it. Inside each of us, there's this little point that is God's. No matter what we do, how much we sin, no matter how much that's done to us, no matter how we're violated, no matter how much we're mistreated, that little point is always connected to God. And therein lies our hope, because if we know that point is there, we can do something about it. We can visit that point regularly. We do it when we come to church on Sundays. We do it when we practice our spiritual disciplines, when we pray, when we sing. We're visiting that point, and we're actually building it up, that point of God in us, that glory of God that's in us, that beauty that is in us is there. And it's up to us to nurture it, to fertilize it. But we have to first recognize our innocence and our vulnerability. And that's hard for us when, as Keating says, we're interested in power and control, survival and security, affection and esteem. It's hard to be vulnerable like a little infant. It's hard to admit in this society when we're so busy putting things together, having nice houses, having nice vacations, driving nice cars, rising up the corporate ladder, it's so easy for us to forget. We have to be innocent and vulnerable to connect to that point.
people here who are familiar with the 12-step program and have worked the program know that when you hit bottom, when they hit bottom, when I hit bottom, when we hit bottom, that is the point of our total vulnerability. There's nowhere else to go. And at that point, people in the 12-step programs admit that they are, we are powerless and our lives have become unmanageable. They came to believe that a power greater than themselves could restore us to sanity. And the third step, they made a conscious decision to turn over their wills and their lives to the care of God as they understand God. My question is, some of us may have worked the 12 steps. Some of us may not, we may just vaguely know about it. But can we follow that path? Can we be like them, get to the point of being totally innocent and totally vulnerable and totally trusting in God? We just sang, we sang this, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. Do we believe that about God? God is our maker, our redeemer, our defender, and our friend. Think about that, friend. We then sang, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light, be thou my wisdom, heart of my heart. We sang those words. Do we really believe them? Can we really put them into action in our life, in my life, in your life, now, today? Because if we can, life is going to change for each of us, and life is going to change for all those people that we're in relationship to, and life is going to change for society. And you know what, guys? It begins right here. It begins with our willingness to say, I am vulnerable. And Jesus said, come to me, all you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We can only come to Jesus if we admit we need to go to Jesus. So what would it be like if we not only said that, we not only believed it, but we actually lived it here and now and every day going forward? Amen. Please stand as you're able. We'll say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
prayers of the people. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father. Come, Holy Spirit, from heaven shine forth with your radiant love. Come, Father of the poor. Come, generous spirit. Come, light of our hearts. Amen. Perfect comforter, you make peace to dwell in our soul. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful refreshment in our labor, you offer rest in our trials, strength. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly light, enter the inmost depths of our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Bend our rigidity, inflame our apathy. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Send rain upon our dry ground. Heal our wounded souls. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Give us lasting joy. Come, Holy Spirit. From heaven shine forth with your radiant love. Amen. We lift up these prayers submitted by the people of St. Luke's. For those on our parish prayer list, Loretta, Chris, Cindy, Lorraine, Diane, Becky, Beatrice, Janet, Molly, Karen, Rachel, Mike, Bill, Ray, Andrew, Alberto, Jeff, Sam, Karen, Austin, Sharon, Kara, Felix, Samantha, Jake, Andrew, Nala, Bev. For those suffering with mental health and addiction symptoms, and for all those affected by COVID-19. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, he has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another. Good morning. I'm Delight. I'm a senior warden. Once again, thank you to Reverend Michelle for serving here at St. Luke's while Mother Krista is away, and she will be back next Sunday. Mother Krista, not Michelle. <laughs> um, this coming Saturday, July 15th, Fort Collins will have its Pride Festival. If you'd like to sign up to help with our booth, you still can, just outside the doors. Also, um, also, if you are available after the service to help um, attach tags to candy that we're passing out, we would appreciate your help. Um, so sign up for the booth or just come and represent our loving church at the festival. And you can check your email for details. And there are a few things in the bulletin as well. Uh, please look in the basket that's on the sign-up table in the lobby for a summer newsletter addressed to you. Um, take it home with you if you find it. If you don't find it, you might have gotten it by email. And on the other table where the program bulletins were, you'll find some extras there. So lots of opportunities to get that information. Um, check your bulletin. There are lots of exciting things happening. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget her. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of is to magnify you as we sing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 